Hello everyone, I'm here again today to talk more about science with you and the inheritance of traits. Uh, last time we read from the book, Inheritance of Traits, Why is my dog bigger than your dog? And we will continue to do that today. The last time we, we, we read from this book, we learned that all dogs came, come from the ancestry of wolves. Long ago, wolves were hanging around human camps and settlements where they were looking for food and people realized that the wolves could be useful to them if they were domesticated or trained or tamed. So that's what people did. Uh, similar to the way we train dogs, they were trained with food. So we train our dogs with treats. People trained wolves with food. So we learned how different breeds do different things. We learned about the Siberian Huskies and how they pretty much still look like wolves and uh, they're useful for pulling sleds through the snow. Some animals are bigger, some animals are stronger, some are more fierce, and some are faster. So today we're going to read a little bit more about these dogs and some other animals, and we're going to uh, learn about the different capabilities of different types of dogs. So here we begin today. Bred for speed. You reach a section where greyhounds are on show. You study a greyhound's lean, muscular body, and watch a video about greyhound racing which shows the dogs speeding around a racetrack. With its long head and neck, flexible body, and powerful legs, every part of a greyhound's body is built for speed. Selective breeding. The greyhound breed was developed over many years through a process called selective breeding. Breeders selected or chose their very fastest, strongest animals to breed from. Over time, the breed became even stronger and faster with animals reaching record speeds. Modern greyhounds can run up to 45 miles per hour over a short distance. <coughs> greyhounds are born with a natural instinct and ability to run. So as we did discuss a little bit, um, breeders have selectively chosen their fastest and strongest dogs over many generations so that the greyhound eventually became even faster and even stronger through that human interference of the evolution. Born to run. Greyhounds are an ancient breed. These dogs were developed over 4,000 years ago to hunt antelope. Later, they were bred for track racing. For centuries, breeders selected animals without understanding how inheritance worked. Now we know that features pass from parents to their young through genes which are found inside cells. In the late 1800s, the development of powerful microscopes allowed scientists to see inside cells for the first time. This was a big step toward the discovery of genes. This picture of two greyhounds was painted in 1812. Some more, some more um, text features. We have bold words, the words, Inheritance genes and cells. We have a photo. Well, it's a painting, but a photograph and we have a caption. We have headings All useful in nonfiction text and nonfiction texts the ultimate pony show You feel like taking a break from the dog show and head off to the ultimate pony show The show includes horses of different sizes from large heavy draft horses to small Shetland ponies their coats vary in color from black to chestnut, gray, white, and golden. Some horses have spotty or piebald, which means patchy, markings. Taming wild horses. There are over a hundred horse breeds, all descended from wild horses that galloped over the plains of Asia about 6,000 years ago. As horses were tamed, people noticed that they could be useful in many ways. They could carry soldiers into battle and pull carts or chariots. In some parts of the world, horses are still used to pull farm equipment. Some horses are bred for sports, such as polo, racing, and show jumping. Developing horse breeds. Over time, different breeds of horses were developed to do different jobs. Some were bred to carry riders, others were bred to pull coaches and carriages. Draft horses were developed to haul plows and other farm equipment. A farmer breeding draft horses would select his biggest and strongest horses to breed from. 
a breeder might also breed a strong horse with a fast one to get a foal, a baby horse, with both speed and strength. The variety of horses. The smallest pony is the Falabella, which stands just 30 inches tall at the shoulder. So that's less than three feet tall. The largest draft horses stand over 70 inches and weigh over 2,200 pounds. So that's over six feet tall. The world of cats. The ultimate cat show is in the next hall. You marvel at the variety of breeds on show. All domestic cats are descended from tabby-colored African wild cats. Cats were kept as pets in ancient Egypt over 3,500 years ago. They helped Egyptian farmers by killing rats and mice. A variety of cats. Looking around, you see that cats vary in shape and color, just as dogs and horses do. You stop to admire a Persian with its long, fluffy fur and flattish face. Not far away, Siamese cats are on show. They have short fur and long noses. There are cats with long, fluffy tails, short tails, and Manx cats with no tails at all. Cats vary in color from black to gray, white, cream, orange, and tabby. The Cat Family the domestic cat belongs to the cat family, which has 37 species. The family is divided into big cats and small cats. Big cats include the lion, tiger, and leopard. Ocelots, servals, and wild cats are small cats. Natural skills and instincts. Whether large or small, all cats have similar body shapes. They also share certain instincts and abilities. All cats are strong, agile, and good at climbing. They have very good senses, especially sight. All cats are meat-eating hunters. Hunting is a natural instinct, even in pet cats. All these qualities pass from parents to their young through genes. The cat's natural hunting ability is used by farmers to control mice. Uh, this text here, this page, discusses natural instincts and hunting. Hunting is a, is a behavioral inheritance it's a, it's a be it's 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 in, it is inherited but it's not physical it's not a, a physical trait it is a behavioral trait which we will be discussing later this week how do genes work now this is a very interesting page so after we discuss the genes and how they work we will stop for today how do genes work you stop by a breeder who is showing two prize-winning cats, a male and a female. A sign says either animal can be rented for breeding. You talk to the breeder who explains about inheritance and genes. This prize-winning cat is a Maine Coon breed. Very nice looking cat. As you can see, uh, its features are very, very, very strong. It's got really nice... Uh, just really, it's really nice looking. Nice thick fur, nice eyes, the way the face is shaped. Chromosomes, chromosomes often coil up to form X shapes. They are formed of DNA, which is shaped like a twisted ladder. The four chemicals make up the rungs of the ladder. So the chromosome is made up of DNA and this, this diagram, this picture is really cool because it shows a chromosome and then it shows how the DNA is it's, it's, it's unwound. So it, it shows you that the chromosome is made up of that DNA and that the DNA goes together like a coiled ladder. Okay, and we learned that the different, the four different chemicals or proteins that make up DNA go together in different pairs and different, um, it's organized in different patterns depending on the trait that's being inherited. Your eye, the, the DNA in your eye cells, it's organized differently than in your fingernails or in your skin cells. So each different body part has DNA organized in a different way. 
all about genes. Genes are found in the cell nucleus, the tiny blob that acts as the cell's control center. Genes are sections of long strands called chromosomes. Each chromosome carries thousands of genes. Each gene is like a small snippet of information carrying the instructions for a particular feature such as fur color. So that's what basically what I was saying that okay the fur color has its own different gene and the the, the consistency of the fur whether it's a thick fur or, or a, a thinner shorter fur also different genes and remember those genes are independent of each other so you can have thick fur with black hair or you can have thick fur with brown hair or you can have orange fur that's thin and, and not as thick the full set of instructions works like a blueprint to build new baby animals such as puppies kittens and foals so we've heard that word a lot, blueprint. So when, when, when an architect is building a house or a building, they draw out a blueprint and it shows where each piece of wood will go, how it will be built. So when we keep hearing that DNA and genes are like the blueprint of how our bodies are built up, that's basically what it means. It's like the, it's like the instruction that shows where every piece goes. Genes are made of chemicals called DNA. DNA has four special chemicals that are arranged in different ways. Just as the letters of the alphabet can be arranged to spell words, so the arrangement of the chemicals forms a code. The code tells the cells how to work and develop. Number of chromosomes. Here's a sidebar. Different types of animals have different numbers of chromosomes in their cells. Cats have 38 chromosomes, dogs have 78, and horses have 64. Humans have 46 chromosomes. The actual number is not very important, but the number is always even because chromosomes come in pairs. So your chromosomes go together in pairs, so you get 23 from your mother and 23 from your father, and they pair up. And the chromosomes, 23 of them, are wound up like this with DNA basically acting as a code. And there's DNA in each of your cells as well. So that is where we will end today. All right, so just keep in mind, all right, the, the chromosomes, different animals have different numbers of chromosomes, but the number is always even. That's important because it comes in pairs. Um, we talked about selective breeding. Selective breeding is important because dogs and horses and cats okay they have not evolved naturally they have evolved with human interference which means that humans basically guided the evolution of these animals by selective breeding by picking the animals with the traits that they found most beneficial and so they have not necessarily in a negative way but they have interfered in the evolution of these animals Okay, so that's about all that I'd like to discuss today. Remember that behavioral, behavioral um, inheritance takes place as well. We, in, we inherit behaviors from our parents. Uh, just think of natural things that are, that are inherited, like we need to eat. That's something that is inherited. And if we didn't have a grocery store to go to, we would naturally become hunters because of the fact that we need to eat and so our hunger would drive us to find food okay so that's it for today I hope you enjoyed the, the read aloud we'll finish up tomorrow and you'll have a couple questions to answer today so have a great day